title of the message tonight is Transformed by God's Goodness, Gentleness, I'm sorry, by God's Gentleness. Uh, last week, uh, I introduced the idea of that work that we are being transformed really as we develop in the nature of God, in the fruit mm -hmm. of the Spirit, which is the nature of God. And so as we develop in that, we're being transformed. And tonight, I want to give an application of that general concept by looking at gentleness, uh, because that's a part of his nature. That That is his nature. He is gentle. A and we need to realize that he is gentle and that when he comes to you, he will come to you in his true nature of gentleness. And when he speaks mm. to you, he will speak to you in his true nature of gentleness. And so if we're expecting something harsh or, or uh, something that uh, is way out there that's different than him, uh, that's not the way he's going to come. He's going to come and speak to you in gentleness. Mm -hmm. uh, for remember in Matthew 11, uh, verse 29, uh, he said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you a rest. Uh, learn of me. Uh, because I'm gentle. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse for us. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Okay. So he is gentle. And uh, some translations say, for I am meek. So he's gentle and meek. That word... Uh, in the Greek there, has both of those meanings, gentleness and meekness. They mean the same thing. Mm. So where you find men, meekness, you find gentleness. Where you find gentleness, you find meekness. And he's humble. And so meekness and gentleness and humble, being humble, they all uh, relate to one another. And, and so that's very important. And, and why is that? Why did he say, I'm gentle? Uh, because then that's going to help us learn. We have to be expecting gentleness mm. that he's going to come to us when he speaks to us, uh, when he walks with us. He's going, to, uh, he's going to be speaking in his nature of gentleness, and we need to be expecting that. If we're expecting something else, we won't recognize when he speaks to us in gentleness. Mm -hmm. And it's going to open our heart. See, he said, learn. And so mm -hmm. he's going to prepare us to learn. Mm -hmm. And the way we learn from him is the in the atmosphere of gentleness, of meekness, of humility. And so when we're seeing him for who he really is, we can learn from him. Otherwise, we miss him, and and the world uh, shows a different uh, view of Jesus, and the and uh, the devil is definitely wanting to present some other uh, to portray him some other way. And so, when we get those uh, ideas of who he is confused, we will miss the true Jesus. Jesus comes in gentleness, and that's pre creates an atmosphere of calm and peace. Mm -hmm. And we can learn in that kind of an atmosphere because it, it generates trust in us. When we mm -hmm. know that he is gentle, then we uh, can be uh, prepared to receive from him and in that nature. And that will help us grow and produce the fruit of gentleness ourselves. See, the we grow in the fruit as we encounter the Lord. Uh, if we're trying to produce fruit without the Lord, uh, he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You can do nothing without me. And so we can't get out there on our own and produce his fruit, mm -hmm. his nature. We have to be connected to him and expecting encounters with his presence. And that's when uh, we will begin to develop in uh, gentleness, and then we can portray gentleness. Mm -hmm. We can demonstrate gentleness. Now, I said that gentleness and meekness are interchangeable, uh, and, and so a lot of people think meekness is weakness. 
uh, but weak, meekness is not weakness. And, and, uh, and the opposite of that, it, it is strength under control. Mm, and mm, I, mm, I mm. think about the first time I was, uh, Sherry and I went on a uh, jumbo jet. Oh, they were just, those jets are massive uh, machines. So have so much propulsion and strength in them. And uh, we were going to Europe, and and what was interesting, we got in this big plane with all of these hundreds of people, and mm -hmm. and we flew over to Europe. And when we flew uh, into the airport and landed, it was so gentle. It was so gentle. Uh, it it was just like we're riding in a car, and mm -hmm. it, it came down. And everybody in the plane at the same time began to give a, applause <laughs> uh, to, <laughs> to, the to, pilot. to the pilot because it came down. It was so such a gentle uh, landing. That's what I want you to think about as gentleness. It's the demonstration of skill with skill, uh, demonstration of strength, but with skill mm -hmm. and, and with control. Uh, and so just think about that jumbo jet, how much strength it had and power it had, and yet it landed so softly and, and it was so gentle that everybody was amazed. Everybody on the plane immediately burst into uh, an applause uh, because nobody was expecting that. On this huge uh, plane, you'd think it just bounce, bounce, bounce when it got there. But no, it was, it showed skill uh, in controlling that strength and power of that airplane. And that's what mm, meekness Jesus. is. Oh, wow. Glory to God. Now, thank you for that. Because I need gentleness. I need gentleness. But what he just said to me, what he just said to all of us, that, that we can still be strong and we can still be uh, assertive and and show forth power but still be gentle be gentle and, right. and under control and and uh a demonstration of, of the strength under control uh mm -hmm. hallelujah that's, uh, that, that's really important uh I, I want you to think about gentleness in a different way tonight uh, than we've thought about you you know when you you think about a person you say oh that's a gentle person but mm -hmm. but when you think about the Lord, I want you to think about oh, mm -hmm. He is the gentle one, mm -hmm. and uh, we we need to reflect His nature. We need to portray His nature, uh, and, and the way we portray His nature, see, is when we encounter harsh people and difficult people, we respond. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah! We <laughs> respond with a gentle answer. And when we, and that shows we're under control. Mm -hmm. We're we're powerful. We're we have strength, oh, but hallelujah. we are under control, and we're not going to give them back the same spirit that they give us. They they come with harshness and and, and hatred and anger and, and anger and shouting and and we respond. See, like that jumbo jet under control and we land gently we give them a gentle answer so let i'll ask sherry to read this third verse uh and we'll go back to the other one in a moment but down here in proverbs okay proverbs 15 1 it says a gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger okay so when people come with harsh words to you if you let it affect you so you'll come back with anger but but mm. and so it's you're re returning the same spirit that they're giving you but no that's not what mm. we're to do mm. we're supposed to come back in the nature of, of christ and, and give a a gentle answer an answer in gentleness now remember it's not because we're weak mm -hmm. but we're strength we have strength under control. Under control. Mm, that's good. Hallelujah. It would be very easy to respond with <laughs> anger. And that's what a lot of people do. But that's not mature nature of Jesus Christ. 
the mature nature of Jesus Christ is going to come back with a gentle answer when they come harsh. Okay, now remember what I was talking about last time is that we're transformed uh, by the fruit. So as we have more and more of the fruit of Christ, the more and more of the nature of Christ, we become more and more like him. We're tr being transformed from glory to glory. But those are very general terms. But let me show you here that this other verse that I want Sherry to read uh, out of Psalm. Um, Psalm 1835. You have also given me the shield of your salvation and your right hand upholds me and your gentleness makes me great. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> How much, how much greatness do you have? You know, you, we probably all need to be transformed in order to be great. And what is the one fruit of the spirit that this verse says will transform oh, us into greatness. into greatness? Oh, hallelujah. It's, it's gentleness. It's gentleness. That's good. It's gentleness. That's very good. Now, this message, <laughs> you, you might say, well, well, this message is not for us, oh. but it's for your family. Don't, oh. don't you? Can't you imagine your family operating in gentleness? And maybe you've got the big fruit of gentleness. Mm. But all of our families, and if, even if this message is not touching you, it's about your families. Well, we want those families. We want our families and the people around us and our friends. We want them to be more gentle. Well, how are they going to get more gentle unless they see gentleness in you and in me? Hallelujah. 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 This is an important message. This is a demonstration and an application of what I began last week hmm. about we are being transformed by the fruit of the Spirit because it's the very nature of God. And as we develop in the nature of God, we're going to be transformed. We're going to be like him. And that's what it takes mm, to be transformed, to be like him. We have to have his nature. And his nature is gentle. He said, come unto me. Yeah. And I'm going to create an atmosphere Fear. of gentleness where you can mm -hmm. trust me and, and your heart will open up to, you, to me, he's saying. And, and when your heart opens up to him, then he's going to pour in gentleness and he's going to change you into his image of gentleness. Oh, oh hallelujah. That's good. That's good. And, and that fruit will transform you into greatness. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and I might think that we would all uh, benefit from more greatness. Amen. But greatness comes from Thank our you. being gentle, having strength. God's strength, but having it under control. Now, remember the word, the Greek word, <laughs> and, and I don't uh, like to talk about those words a lot, but I want you to see that gentleness and meekness go together. And so I want to look at a person uh, in Numbers uh, chapter 12, verse 3. Moses was a meek person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Moses he was more meek than anybody on the earth. And we're going to see that process, how he got there. How, but also, it means that he was gentle. He, he was more gentle than anybody else on the earth. Would you like to be considered the most gentle person on the earth, on the face of the earth? Oh, you you could you? be. And I'm going to show you how. The process mm. of how Moses became the most meek or the most gentle person in all the earth now this is after he killed somebody <laughs> uh, he started out killing somebody oh wow and he wound up being the most gentle person on the face of the earth oh, goodness. You, you'd think his reputation would would carry on yeah. and that the uh, the bible wouldn't say he's gentle i mean he'd killed somebody okay so read this verse here it's in numbers 12 3 now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's look at his life. Let's look at his life for a while. How, how did he get there? Mm -hmm. How did he get there to be the most meek or, but we also know that that means gentle and humble. How did he get there? 
because he was raised in Pharaoh's house. And so he was raised to be a ruler uh, in Egypt. And that was a ruler over the nation and ruler over the slaves and, and ruler out there to build pyramids with the slaves and do all of that stuff you did with the slaves. He, that was the way he was raised. But at some point in time, when he uh, encountered uh, the Lord and the presence of the Lord, and uh, he began realizing that he was really an Israelite and, and that that was not his destiny to rule uh, in Egypt, to rule over the Egyptians and rule over the slaves. He had a different destiny. Mm -hmm. and, and what his... What his destiny was, was to deliver God's people. Amen. That was his destiny. Okay, so when he was 40 years of age, he went out and tried to deliver an Israelite because he, he saw this Egyptian <laughs> fighting with an Israelite. So that's his same family, the Israelites, if, although he's raised there in the house of Pharaoh. And so he killed the Egyptian and he buried him in the sand. Okay, so he's 40 years of age. And then uh, some of the other Israelites said, well, you kill that Egyptian. Are you going to kill us? And so he thought, oh, no, everybody knows. And so he fled. Okay, so this is where we pick up his story. He's 40 years of age. He is not gentle. He is so mean that he kills an Egyptian. And now he's going to have to run. And so he runs for 40 years. And then mm. after about 40 years, he encounters God and the burning bush. And the burning bush. And then in, Rome, in Numbers 12, he said he's the meekest man on the earth or the most gentle man on the earth. Uh, and so all of that past then, had, he's overcome his past. He overcame all of that. And so let's see how he did it. Well, we find in Hebrews 11, this is a really important thing. In this 40-year period, uh, the beginning of it starts in, we see how he started in Hebrews 11, verse 27. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible okay so this is the point when he's 40 years of age and he forsook egypt that's when he he was going to be a ruler in egypt and but at the age 40 he forsook that route and because he had another destiny to be a deliverer but see he had faith now that's an important thing and it was by faith he endured what was going to happen over the next 40 years by faith and over the rest of his lifetime, it was by faith. So Moses is a man of faith. He's a person of faith. And we and we pick him up there. Okay, so let's think about what his character was. Well, mm -hmm. he was he had a lot of strength. He was strong enough to kill an Egyptian uh, taskmaster. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is a person who's strong and, and ruling over people and telling them what to do. And so in his strength, he was going to deliver uh, the Israelite, okay? So he killed the Egyptian, and now for 40 years, uh, he's out in the wilderness. And what he's doing in the wilderness, he, he's met a, a beautiful young girl, and he married her, and now he's got a father-in-law who has some sheep. And so for 40 years, he's watching over the sheep in the uh, wilderness. wilderness and it says the backside of the wilderness so it, it must not have been mm -hmm. a very good place okay so this must have been an embarrassing thing and this was uh, he had been a prince a prince in Egypt and, and a ruler in Egypt and now he's a shepherd over somebody else's sheep it's not even his sheep somebody else's sheep and, and so he, over that mm -hmm. 40 years of time his natural strength began to dwindle and drain out mm -hmm. over 40 years. But there's a really important verse that Jesus, uh, in, in, the, in the Bible, I want Sherry to read, uh, and it's right mm -hmm. here. Isaiah 40, 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, 
he increases strength. Okay. So in other words, what he's saying here, God gives strength to people who have no strength. Oh, hallelujah. See, at age 40, hallelujah. Moses had a lot of strength. He was relying on his strength to deliver the Israelites. Now, for 40 years, he's going through a process. He's going through a process of 40 years, and his strength is going to dwindle and go down 80 years old, just out there in the backside of the wilderness, not backside, okay? And so his strength has dwindled and his strength has gone away, but God is giving him a new strength. God is giving him his strength, okay? So what else do we know about Moses while he's out there in those 40 years? Well, he be, his heart was broken. His spirit was broken. Up until then, it was all about him and, and uh, him uh, doing what he wanted to do mm -hmm. and, and even fulfilling his call in his own strength. But now, 40 years, he, he is a broken spirit, oh, a wow. broken and a contrite Heart. heart. See, that's what mm -hmm. that's what David wrote in I in Psalm 51, I believe it's verse 17. He said, You do not desire sacrifices of bullocks and sheep. You desire a sacrifice of a, a broken Come. spirit and a contrite and broken heart. heart. Okay, mm -hmm. so Moses is changed now. He's just like he's just like David. David committed adultery and murder, and then he realized when the prophet came to him, he realized uh, what an awful sin he had committed. I'm talking about adultery and murder, and this is the same thing that Moses did. Murder, not, not adultery, but murder, uh, and so Moses went through that same process that we see that David went through, and we all have to go through it. That we uh, that we realize that we were sinners uh, and and we're no longer sinners, but yet we've had this. And we have to repent. We have to mm -hmm. we have to have a broken uh, spirit and a contrite and broken heart. And that's what Moses did over forty years. It was a process for him. David's came pretty quickly uh, mm -hmm. when the prophet addressed him. Uh, he 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 really broke. And, and realized the sins and the uh, terrible consequences and, of the sin. And so, but we all have to go through this process. This is the sacrifice that God wants. Uh, he, he doesn't want uh, people coming and working for him in their strength and, and with a spirit that's going to reject the things of God. You know, there's a lot of people uh, who do what God tells them to do, but they're not willing. They don't have their heart right with God. And this is about getting your inside right, your heart right. And it's called a broken spirit and a contrite and broken heart. That's Psalm mm. 51, verse 17. We all have to go through that process because that's the sacrifice mm -hmm. God wants from all of us. And Moses went through it. And he went through it during that 40-year period. His natural strength drained. He began to turn more and more to God and being a vessel that God could use to deliver Hallelujah. Uh, the Israelites out of Egypt. And so God appeared to him in the burning bush. It says that the scripture literally says that Moses turned aside to see the burning bush okay so he had been going on his own way but all of a sudden he's going to turn aside and, and hear from god and he's going to go down and deliver israel which was in the calling on his heart all along but it has to be god's way the same for all of us we have to go god's way we have to rely not on our strength but on his strength amen when we get to the point where we know it's not going to be by our strength but it's by his strength then he gives us strength uh, but we have to have our heart right. We have to get all of our heart uh, cleaned out and pure before him. And that's a broken spirit and a contrite and broken heart. Okay, so we have to be like that. We all have to go through the same process that Moses went through. We don't, it doesn't always have to take 40 years. 
but we have to go through that process in order to fulfill our destiny. And he came, he comes out there in Numbers 12, and he is the meekest and the most gentle person on the face of the earth. Oh, but he I went mean. through a process. Now, David uh, went through a much quicker. So it doesn't take us 40 years. And, and I encourage you to go ahead and seek the <laughs> Lord so that you don't have to go 40 years before you get to the point where God can use you. And it's going to be by that same process that Moses went. It's not on our strength. It's by grace. It's by God's grace. Amen. And we have to have our heart right. We have to straighten out here. A lot of people on the outside, they look like they're doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, their heart's not right. right. And God's not going to give people like that his authority. His authority, see, uh, he gives authority freely to those uh, who have this broken spirit and they've gone through this process and they're gentle and they're meek and, and they're willing mm -hmm. to do what he wants them to do. Uh, most people want to resist uh, what God is telling them to do. But when you get to the point and you accept that and, and you have a broken and a contract heart, then he gives you uh, his authority. So a gentle person has authority. Uh, a wild screaming person uh, yielding a big uh, uh, wielding a big uh, stick on people and hitting them <laughs> over the head with either a, a physical stick or their words uh, he's not giving people like that authority authority mm -hmm. see is his authority rests with those who are gentle mm -hmm. who are meek who are humble he gives grace to the humble, humble I he resists the proud, proud. He gives grace that's his strength and his power uh, to the humble. So let's just uh, highlight what, what I'm talking about here. This is a fruit of the spirit. This is what, what the very nature of God, he is gentle and, and we need to be expecting his gentleness mm -hmm. to interact with. And, and so seeking his gentleness. And so when he shows up with gentleness, accept it, uh, expect that. And that's where your heart will begin to trust in him. And you can trust to hear his voice because he will always approach you and come to you in his true nature, which is gentleness. Mm -hmm. Now, when we begin to receive his true nature of gentleness, then we begin to pour out what? Gentleness to Ooh, other people. Hallelujah. So because that's our fruit. And the reason we grow fruit it's not for our purposes, but for other people yes. so that other people can partake. Yeah, to of, give it to others. Uh, of our fruit. Let's grow it and give it out to other people. And so when we begin to interact with other people, then uh, with gentleness and meekness and humility, then he gives you authority. He gives you authority uh, to do his will, his assignments. See, we we can't give, uh, we can't get his authority to do our own thing. And, and you think, oh, I, I've got all of this authority because Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me, and, and he gives you authority. But it's authority to be used by a gentle person. Oh, hallelujah! A of gentleness flowing out, gentleness uh, to other people. This is a really important message, and, and, and when you begin to produce gentleness to your family, to your spouse, to your children, to your parents, when you begin to grow that fruit and they begin to see that gentleness in you, you're being changed, but you're showing them a way for them to be changed, and they can receive then. Gentleness is something people can receive. Uh, mm -hmm. harshness, uh, uh, anger, mm -hmm. bitterness. The people can't yeah, receive we'll, that. They'll push them away. They, they'll reject it. But when you're gentle, uh, the worst sinner out there is going to receive gentleness. Hallelujah. And, and accept gentleness. That they, they will accept God's love. Uh, they cannot God's resist God's love it. will not fail. God's love will not fail. And so when we operate in gentleness, it, we're going to be like Jesus 
And Jesus was gentle. That's what he said about himself. Yes. Come unto me, all you who labor, labor and heavy laden, and learn of me, for I'm gentle and I'm humble. Oh, hallelujah. And another thing, it's going to transform you into greatness. Hallelujah. And you might say, well, I didn't come out of roots of greatness. Oh, but now you're, you're coming out of the root of Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> And that that makes you <laughs> that makes you great. <laughs> makes you great because Amen. you're coming out of the root of Jesse. You're coming out of Jesus. You're portraying Ooh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah! You're, you're hallelujah. portraying Jesus on the earth, and he's gentle, and he's great, and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah! 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 You know, I think about revival and i think about how people are wanting to see their families saved and and their friends and those that are out there on the streets that that need jesus you know that gentleness is what they're going to catch on to they're going to hold on to that uh because in the world they've had tribulation and in the world they may have had angry people come come to them to persecute them, to say evil over them. Uh, they may have had sickness or disease uh, the, and many other things uh, to come and attack them. And so what are they looking for? They're looking for that gentle, kind spirit uh, that the Lord wants us to bring forth and demonstrate. Um, you know, I, I found out a long time ago uh, with my family that as long as I just kept um, um, preaching, 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 and telling them what they were doing wrong, then they were rejecting me. They were rejecting the word. They were rejecting Jesus. And But when I just came back and began to to love them and to to be um, a person who who spoke kind words to them, uh, they begin to they begin to soften their hearts begin to soften and so gentleness that fruit of gentleness will soften our hearts but it also will soften other people's hearts and and help help the word go go in there and take root and the Holy Spirit can begin to work with with those that we are wanting to see come to Jesus and uh, and and it definitely works so, so if you don't change if people around you see that you haven't changed then it's not a testimony to them about the goodness of the Lord I mean and, and so each of us needs to change. And here is a guidance on how to change. Uh, it's to be changed into the image of Jesus Christ, into his gentleness. Mm. And I'm showing you the process. The process, we saw it in Moses. Uh, he, he went from a killer, a murderer. He went to the most gentle person on the earth. Oh, what, what, mm, a, what a testimony and transformation. Now, what a transformation. And so it doesn't matter where you are today. What matters is the process you go through so that you can be more like Jesus. So you can be gentle and humble like he is. And that means not weakness, but it means mm -hmm. strength under control oh, demonstrating yeah. strength now it's one thing to have strength but it's another thing to demonstrate strength mm. under control just like that uh jumbo jet i was talking about yeah. it demonstrated power under control that's why we all need to to be we mm. need to be demonstrating we have the power we have the power of the Holy Spirit within us, but we need to be demonstrating that through gentleness, oh, letting hallelujah. people letting people taste of your gentleness oh, of that fruit. Hallelujah. And so when they 
come at you with harsh words, you, you hear them say harsh words, you come back with gentleness and it will change them. And they'll know that you have been changed. Amen. Oh, our old nature wasn't, wasn't, That's right. wasn't gentleness and not God's gentleness. It, it may have seemed a form of gentleness, but not God's gentleness not God's gentleness. This is a higher standard. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants you to be producing gentleness and be transformed into the nature of Christ. I'm going to turn it over to you. You know, 2023 is a year of action. It's a year of demonstrating uh, the, the word of God, not just being a student of the word, not just being uh, a hearer of the word, but that we are a doer of the word. And that's what he said to me this morning as he's been speaking to me about mobilizing, about uh, starting prayer teams in different locations. And uh, I just want to, to throw out some things to you because it relates to this gentleness that Freddie has been teaching about tonight. The gentleness of the Lord is going to lead people into the kingdom, bring people into the kingdom. And as we demonstrate gentleness, then they're going to, to taste of the Lord and see that he's good. And they're going to want what, what God has for them, uh, which is healing and salvation and deliverance and, and um, freedom. Uh, they're they're going to want all that. And, and so this is the year of demonstrating uh, the, the word of God. And, you know, many of you have much word inside of you. You've heard the word of God for, for years. And now it's time to begin to demonstrate it and to act on it and to, to be what Jesus wants you to be. 